Well, welcome to another series one, or as we've decided to call it, Freddo's Farm Adventures. And today what we're going to be doing is a radiator repair. Is that right, Tony? Yeah, we'll see if we can get it out first. There's a four rusty bolts in our way, but we'll see how we go. And we're not going to be using any modern uh, potions to fix this. We're going to be using pure, beaut beautiful lead solder. So if you want to find out how to fix your radiator on pretty much any vehicle up to date, then you know what to do. Click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too. But as Damon agrees, the most important thing to do is stay tuned. That's it. So, uh, getting Fredo here ready for his uh, next big adventure, and Damon and I have obviously just been chatting and looking around the vehicle, and we thought we would investigate the fuel tank underneath the driver's seat, because we've been using a plastic bottle as its fuel tank, and the fuel tank actually looks in perfectly good condition. A uh, little bit of, I guess, muck in the bottom, but nothing to worry about. So I've just drained the, or taken off the sediment bowl, because these had a sediment bowl filter, and then obviously an electric fuel pump, but because this has got a Holden engine in it, it's got a mechanical fuel pump. So essentially it's got two fuel filters, one in the uh, fuel pump on the motor, and one on the firewall here. So I've just cut off the actual fuel hose, that was, you know, it was basically way too much in the engine bay, and I'm just going to hook this on to the uh, standard Land Rover sediment bowl. And so we should be able to chuck a jerry can or two of fuel in the fuel tank. And Freddo should hopefully come back to life and we'll have plenty of fuel to take us on a proper adventure. <laughs> As we said earlier, we're going to pull the radiator out of this Series 1, but because it's been sitting for many, many years, it's not a straightforward task. So the two bolts that were actually holding the badge on were completely and utterly seized, so we've actually had to cut those off. Now having cut those off, we've then found, because this has got a Holden conversion in it, the actual shroud behind the headlight has obviously been cut to accommodate the radiator moving forward for some reason. And behind, after taking the headlight out, we've now got access to the bolts that are now holding the radiator in. So it just goes to show a five minute job can turn into a one and a half hour job very, very quickly. But anyway, we've got four bolts to take out and then we can slip the radiator out and we can finally start repairing it. There's your problem. Big hole. There's actually no bung in it. Well, actually, what I think's happened, they've had a bung in here, and it's actually chafed against the chassis and worn a hole that might have been really thin walled, but because of the corrosion and how long it's been sitting, it's actually got some sort of pressure in there. It's just popped it and. 
definitely not going to hold any water so this will be our next little step to get some water to hold maybe even just a bit of um, fair prey or something I think just for now but we'll see what happens next that is an old radiator All right, so back in the shed here, looking at the Series 1 radiator here that we pulled out. And if you can remember here, it was all corroded and um, I just cleaned it out. Um, and it all pretty well fell out. And uh, it looked pretty similar to the Series 2 radiators. So um, I actually went and got one that uh, is no good. Um, so, um, and I went to get this out and it just pulled out the whole thing uh, and then pulled the uh, bung out and cleaned it up and uh, it fits and the only issue I think will be is because um, this sits on the modified front chassis pretty snug so we might just have to pack it here and here and just see what kind of heights we've got up the top and see if we can shut the bonnet still but uh, that should fix our leaky problem all right it's back in and it's holding water for now I'll just put some four bolts back in just to hold it and can't see any obvious leaks see if we can get it running <laughs> 